In the time that CNC Seamless has been around developing, designing, manufacturing portable CNC machines, we have learned a lot about the do's and don'ts for the general practices when operating a hand torch like this. And just wanted to share some common mistakes people might make when you're just starting out and try to hopefully improve on the optimal quality you can get while cutting with a hand torch. So let's start off by talking about the anatomy of an oxy-fuel torch. You've got your inlets here, this is your oxygen and your fuel, either acetylene, propane, natural gas, whatever your hand torch is rated for. And essentially you've also got this lever here, which is your cutting jet. When you're preheating your material here, you're going to depress this lever so that it actually releases the high pressure oxygen jet and that's what's doing your actual cutting. So you're preheating material, getting it nice and hot with your preheat flame and then the cutting jet that's coming out is what's going to actually blow that out and let you cut through the steel. With that, one of the most common mistakes that are made when using an oxyacetylene hand torch is not having the right preheat set. So, of course you want to get these notorious blue cones coming out of the torch tip. You want them to be fairly short but also bright, and that's the general tip that we've learned about and taken into account when we operate our Mach 1 machine. Secondary is if you have any torch popping, so when you hear that kickback or it kind of sounds like things are going off inside this chamber here. A lot of the times that is due to the fact that the torch tip itself has not been seated properly. Typically what we do is we just take the tip off, we hit it with some scotch sprite and that should make it so that when you tighten this nut back on there, you've got a nice fit contact that's going to reduce the amount of torch popping coming off of your torch. Another thing you want to think about is the kind of tip that you have on your torch. So if you're cutting a two inch thick plate, you're gonna to wanna to use a torch that's got a much bigger kerf width or a bigger hole diameter in it. And that's kind of the, the higher the number is, the bigger the, the torch tip is gonna be rated for. You also wanna think about your pressures that are set at your regulators, at your bottles. The recommended pressure for the fuel is typically between five and 15 PSI. For the oxygen, it really depends on the thickness of material you cut, but that is something that can really help with setting your preheat flame is having the right oxygen regulator set so that your bottles are put on the right value and gives you the easiest way to actually set your neutral flame. The next thing you wanna think about is operating this torch. The weather, the humidity, what altitude you're at, those are all factors that play into how well your torch is gonna to cut through your material. Along with that, preheating is something that you wanna do before you get into your cut. It's a lot easier to preheat from a leading edge. So if you're on an edge of material and you wanna make a straight cut, do you wanna start at your edge, pierce in, and if you're doing holes or something like that, you wanna pierce pretty much in the center of the hole or, or at least pretty far inside of it so that you can kind of get your ground while you're making it up and trying to get that pierce to turn into a nice beautiful cut on the outside or inside of your cut. Other things to talk about is when you're actually maneuvering this torch, so you've got it down, you've preheated, you're piercing. When you start to actually move that torch along, the motion that you're using to actually go along that cut is critical for making sure that you have a nice straight line. You really want to have the torch fairly perpendicular to the surface. A slight angle can help if you're moving along a straight line because it's going to shoot the oxygen out further. And as you're piercing, you want to try to make a continuous straight, almost like you're using a pool cue, just to kind of push this thing through as far as you can in a nice straight line. Additionally, you don't want to be too high or too close to your surface material. So I mentioned those blue cones. What you're going to want to do is keep your torch so that it's just above the blue cones on the material. So you don't want your blue cones diving down while you're cutting or else you're going to gouge out the material that you're cutting along that path. The thinner your material is, obviously the faster you're going to have to move that torch in a continuous speed. We call that the feed rate and that's automatically set with the Mach 1. But you're going to want to make sure that you're moving on a nice continuous rate so you get as clean of a path as possible and you're not hanging around too long, going slow so that the material welds itself together. And you don't want to go too fast that you're going to lose your cut and have to re-pierce again. So of course now that you've got the mechanical operation down and you don't understand how your torch works, you want to be safe. So I'm wearing a, a pretty thick jacket here. If I was actually going to be cutting, I would of course want to be wearing some nice welding gloves, some heat resistant pants, long sleeves of course, you want to cover your face. 
You also want to have at least a number five rated safety glasses, darker shade, not necessarily welding rated, but um, high enough to make sure that you're not staring at, into this flame. And it actually makes it a lot easier to set the preheat when you have those shade five safety glasses on because you can see the flame a lot nicer. That should be everything you need to get up and running with your hand torch, making nice straight cuts and lines. If this sounds like a lot, it sounds like it's gonna be a ton of time and take a lot of practice and skill. You're right, it does. It takes years and years of experience to get really good at operating a hand torch. That's why we designed the Mach 1 in the first place because we know people are using these things out in the field, in shops, pretty much everywhere in heavy industrial America. And we wanted to make something that you could bring to the equipment or the material that you're cutting, kind of take the guesswork out of controlling this torch so that you can focus on doing what's best and putting your time into designing the parts, figuring out how to put the machine down and, and make the, the easy part of actually doing the cutting all on the machine. So thank you very much. These are some common mistakes. If we missed anything, please leave us a comment below. Uh, there's a lot more experts out there than in our company, so we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, what else did we miss and how else can we get better ourselves at using an OxyFuel torch?